स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम मै डियर मोनास्टिक ब्रदर्स अंड मै वेरी डियर डिवोटी ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स टुडे इज फर्स्ट जनवरी द क्रिश्चियन न्यू इयर डे and kalpataru day for all the devotees of sri ram krishna and already have heard two speeches one from swami ashutosh anand ji he has given you several facets pictures of sri ram krishna on which we can meditate and derive great benefit great spiritual benefit and now we have heard swami charada prabhananda telling about how the indians especially the devotees of sri ram krishna celebrate this kalpataru day i was there as he has already referred to and south african center of durban that is It is, not, it's, it is the biggest center in the West we have. It is not one center; it is uh, 20 centers. One center under under that there are 19 branches are there. Each branch can be a center by itself. Each branch has a prayer hall. It has got a guest house. It has got a following of uh, 300 to 400 devotees there. Weekly lectures go on there. So the swamis, two swamis that are there in Durban. one is sharda prabhananda another is our vimokshananda both of them are very enthusiastic they go around all these 19 centers plus they manage this main center and on the main celebrations of the year like sri ram krishna's birthday the 19 centers are were compulsorily made to come to durban and you will see a huge gathering of devotees as sharda prabhananda was telling that he was inspired by the devotees in chennai i was inspired by seeing them there the uniqueness about those devotees is the uniqueness of those devotees is and the uniqueness of our swami is working there is you see we go to temple ordinary people we do not know exactly what how we can go to the temple with, with what attitude we should go they teach them all these things you see when you come to the temple you must feel that you are coming here for a spiritual purpose therefore you should dress yourself in a simple way in an elegant way it need not be shabby it may be elegant but simplicity and elegance can go together so they teach them all the women come with white sari white blouse maybe are one color blouse and white sarees they all come and the gents all will put the pyjama and a shirt or a dhoti and a shirt you will see the whole hundreds of devotees all in a white uniform you feel as if you are in a city of light whole thing is so brighting brighting so it's wonderful they are doing a great work and of course that uh, the state of uh, south africa of which durban is the capital there johannesburg is the capital pretoria so durban is one of the, the third biggest city perhaps there third biggest port in the world and it's a very prosperous state the most prosperous state in south Af- south african states is this south african state of republic of south africa where we are working it's really wonderful how they have bringing up all these people together and full of the spirit of sri thakur mother and swami ji they publish a journal periodical it is two monthly fortnightly fortnightly acha acha so and they are publishing a journal there that many of our books are uh, reprinted there because to import from here there are some restrictions are there so tremendous work is going on and you have heard what devotion those people have and they the 
way they have protected hinduism and are clinging on to this sanatana dharma is because of this power of the faith of those people you see we are here we have got hundreds and hundreds of uh, mathas are there and mathadipatis are there and we have hear them and then some of were hold on to our dharma for them they are away from india there is no teacher there going and he has already depicted you the picture all teachers were prohibited from going there no contact of all of any dharma guru going there no no way of hearing bhagavad gita or upanishad or vedic mantra so for 50 100 years they have been cut off yet they have kept up the sanatana dharma the glory how what what dogmatic uh, holding on to the faith of this ancestors unless you see you cannot imagine now you see the whole thing is again flowering when you go and see them their devotion is equal or more than ours it is flowering it is there in a seed seed form now the free exchange is there and now sri ramakrishna representatives they are all going and many other gurus are also going so now it is all flowering it is a great picture that we heard from him so we are uh, grateful to him for his picture of uh, the celebration of kalpataru day in durban today as is our wont we will hear about kalpataru day how it happened on that day it is a very interesting thing they every every time we hear about it every time we relish it not that we hear anything new but our joy is again reawakened joy you know just as we we enjoy a food in the morning that doesn't mean we don't enjoy our food in the evening we equally relish it similarly this joy of hearing about sri ram krishna and his kalpataru manifestation is something we hear year after year yet we again relish it and enjoy it so as a preamble to the kalpataru day i'll just uh, recount a few of the major events in sri ram krishna's life we all know that sri ram krishna was born to khudiram and chandramani and khudiram went to vishnu gaya and had a vision of vishnu vishnu is the emblem is the embodiment of bhakti and his wife khudiram's wife chandramani she had a vision of shiva light coming from the shiva's temple and entering her womb so she had a vision of shiva who is an embodiment of jnana so the jnana and bhakti there was a harmony even before sri ram krishna was born he was not born as a devotee of jnana or a devotee of bhakti both combined together a unique person so the harmony was there even from the very birth so he was he was born as as you all know on a wednesday and 18th february 1836 he was a prophet of synthesis even from the birth as i have said of jnana and bhakti jnana represents reason bhakti represents emotion reason and emotion they don't go together either we are reasonable and dry or we are emotional we are lose all those we are foolish so either we are foolish emotionalism or dry gnanis reason rationalist both were combined in sri ram krishna he was rational he was emotional also and the re- emotion leads us to love of god religion and reason leads us to the to, to, to the search of truth in the external world that leads us to science so he was the combination of religion and science they are always at all logger heads but sri ram krishna was a combination he used to ask anybody if he says i accept you what you said no 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 you reason it and then afterwards accept don't accept as it is like a money changer seek sees every coin whether it is right or not and then only accept so you must accept my teachings after reasoning here is the spirit of the upanishads where we we got the highest truth of religion but not by through emotion alone but through hard reasoning reason also can bring you to the highest state of bhakti the realization of god 
highest state of happiness, which is mukti, it has come through reason. So reason and religion can go together. Is the one of the great messages of Sri Ramakrishna's life. So he was full of truthfulness, purity from the very beginning itself. Love of God and God men was a special qualification. Just he was 17 year old when he left Kamarpukur. Very strange thing is, in Kamarpukur there were a lot of big scholars were there, pandits were there who used to teach Sanskrit and other scriptures in the school. Nobody realized that Sri Ramakrishna was an avatar, great man. And if some of some of his friends, they thought he is a very good person, very holy person, sweet and all that. Whereas there was the poorest of the poor man who was just a weaver in the village Kamarpukur. He was the person to whom Sri Ramakrishna revealed himself. He was his name was Srinivas Shakari. Srinivas, his name was Srinivas. I can be happy about that. So Srinivas Shakari. Shakari means a person who makes the bangles out of shanka, conch shells. So he was the bangle seller and he was one of the poorest person. So he lived all alone by himself. He somehow got the knowledge that Sri Ramakrishna is God himself. How do we know it? He called when he heard, when he heard that Gadadhar, he was leaving for Calcutta for good. He called him secretly to his house made him stand under a bilva tree and brought all the articles of worship, sweets and scent and then flowers. He offered everything to him and then holding his hand started praying to him, O Gadai, you are, you are God himself. I have seen some of your leela here. How, much, how many more leelas, how many more divine sports you are going to show? But I have become old, I may not live to see. Please take care of me. I leave myself in your hands. On this line, he prayed to him and took leave of Gadadha. So it is a great event. That is the glory of God. See, the scholars cannot know him. But simple hearted, simple people having great faith, God reveals himself to them. So at 18, he declared when he was in Calcutta, he clearly told his brother my, his mission in life. His brother Ram Kumar wanted him to study Sanskrit and become a scholar and out of that scholarship make money. What we do today? We, we take all education, whether it is information technology, whether it is civil engineering or electrical engineering, what do you do with that? Make money. So the same rigmarole of making money, at that time also it was there. So Sri Ramakrishna was asked, to become a Pandit in Sanskrit and then earn money. Either becoming a Pujari or an Archika or a conductor of ceremonials and make money. Sri Ramakrishna categorically told them, I don't want breadwinning education. I want only spiritual realization. I want that education which gives me the eternal peace and I can also convey to others that lasting peace. I want that education. He categorically told at that young age, with all our education missions here, Kothari mission, all this mission, Radha Krishna mission, all the mission could not decide. What is our, what, what should we teach our children? Sri Ramakrishna at that time itself he told, teach your children that education from which, you know, they derive the highest joy for themselves. They will be able to give this joy to others. Whatever is that education, you formulated education. So, it was very clear about the mission of his life that he should bring this joy to this uh, sorrow-stricken world. We have our spotlight on last December, Vedanta Kesari, is the joy of spirituality. You will see wonderful articles on that one. Something fantastic. In the morning I was referring to one of the articles by one Atma Rupananda our American Swami. Brilliant article in that one. Ram Krishna, the joy, the, the picture of joy. How Ram Krishna's whole life is full of joy. And whoever contemplates on him will get real joy. And how we have mistaken what is this, sorrow as joy. This part of it is very important. 
he tells us in the scientific language of the west we are mistaking the sorrow of our joy and the whole of our media the tv the the uh, internet the all the, the advertising agencies they are misleading us into this sorrow saying it is the joy and everyone is frustrated people have got name people have got fame people have got wealth but they have not got peace they have not got joy why did you not get you are going running by and sorrow and how will you get joy and no no we have been going about where are where our uh, advertising agencies and papers are advertising they are giving you wrong direction so with that article you read it's a wonderful article such articles are many sri ram krishna was a, an incarnation of joy so he came and he realized the absolute brahman of vedanta was the cause the ultimate reality from where the whole universe has come this is one of the great findings of sri ram krishna sri ram krishna gave us six great truths the first truth which i consider as the greatest truth is god alone has become the universe our upanishads talk about this sarvam kalvidam brahma this whole universe is brahman what that statement means we could not visualize we could not conceptualize after sri ram krishna has says god alone has become this universe like the clay becomes different forms of plates cups etc and then again when they, when you break them up it will go back and become a lump of clay like this whole universe all of us our body our mind and our atman our soul everything is god alone brahman alone is everything whatever we say is sentient or insentient everything is brahman what a glorious statement he made to the common man also what is the outcome of this one this statement here the scientists have been telling for since the last 300 400 years for us that everything is material only it is the materialistic philosophy that the science is telling so from matter everything has come those of you who have read physics so you have the big bang theory so several theories are there one of the accepted theory is big bang theory what is that big bang theory there was an insentient energy so it just there was a bang it broke into several pieces and each piece started attracting one another so all the planets and the universes were created what is the outcome of all the theory everything is material nothing is conscious there is no happiness in any anywhere it is all it's all dead matter what about the human soul that also is dead matter according to science you don't have a soul if you have a soul that also is a dead matter where do you go and stand what is the very the goal what is the goal to be achieved nothing can be predicted in that material philosophy sri ram krishna brought the message of vedanta he said we also believe that everything has come from one that one is the living consciousness infinite joy of god ananda dheva kalli vimani bhutani jayante from the joy infinite joy of brahman the whole universe has come so every one of us are filled with the joy we have to find that joy within ourselves not outside outside also you can find when after finding it inside because what we find inside only we see outside so if i think that i am a scholar within then i find out scholars from outside also suppose i am a fool dumb fool how can i find out scholar from outside i think everybody is a dumb fool only i think what i am inside i see outside so sri ram krishna's first great statement was he gave us gave us the truth don't believe that everything is matter everything is chinmaya everything is full of infinite consciousness infinite bliss and infinite life satchit ananda so from this his the best expression of this satchit ananda this brahman this god this joy infinite joy is in man the best expression of god is in man so serve man you will serve god service to man is service to god number 3 god is with form without form and something beyond both this is all the quarrel about all the religions one religion says i i accept shiva another say we don't accept shiva we will break all the shiva idols another one 
So another one, he has got his own uh, some store or some emblem. The third man will go, we don't accept that store. Our store is better than that, he will go and break that. The quarrel between all, between the religions is, between the, whether God has a form or whether God does not have a form. If he has a form, does he have the same form or different form? Then quarrel. Sri Ram Krishna put an end to all this. God has form, God is without form, God is beyond both of them, beyond expression. Therefore, all these religious quarrels are man-made. There is no authority for quarrels in any real realization of the great mystics and saints. Fourth truth he gave us was to realize that we are part and parcel of this infinite consciousness, infinite joy. This is the goal of life. Our goal of life is, I belong to God, I don't know, I have forgotten. That is why I am moving like, like an orphan, having the richest person as my father and mother. See, for my father and mother is an emperor and empress. I belong to a big uh, kingdom, but I am thinking that I am an orphan boy. What a foolish state it is. All of us are like that. We are the children of the emperor and empress of this whole universe. We have forgotten that. And we are in sorrow for little things we are afraid. We look at a mouse and we get afraid. We should be able to threaten even a lion. But we are afraid of a mouse. Why? You don't know that you are made of that stuff. So he said, this God realization is the goal. Find out who you are. Find out your relationship with God. You feel that you become a lion again. In that famous story of Swami Vivekananda. Then he also said, that even the social and economic progress have to have as its basis spiritual qualities which are truthfulness, which are equality, equal respect to everyone, selflessness, service, sacrifice. Without these spiritual qualities, no society can be peaceful. So even for social and economic progress, we require spirituality, we require religion. So religion is the basis for the existence of man as a in the human society. Sri Ram Krishna enunciated this fundamental laws of human existence, especially the men for the men and women of the modern age. So now we will come to the with this background, this profound realizations of Sri Ram Krishna. He has come, he has found that all the religions are same and he has himself realized he has not only realized all the gods and goddesses of Hindu pantheon, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Durga, Sheetala, Shiva, Krishna, Rama, along with that one he has realized Muhammad also, he has seen Christ also. And in what uh, intensity? He says Christ has a nose. So there was a, there, there was a little, uh, it was of a particular type. So other people said, no, 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 the description does not show us. But I have seen him like that. Such details. He sees the image of Sita Devi and then he makes a bangle to his wife, to Sharda Devi, which, which is exactly the same design as Sita Devi's bangles. All the Calcutta women come and ask Holy Mother, where did you get this model? We have never seen in Calcutta market. I don't know, you go and ask him. So when they went and asked Sri Ramakrishna, no, I didn't go to the Calcutta market to see these models. It was on the hands of Sita Devi, there were diamonds cut on her bangle. I told that goldsmith, you make the diamonds, you cut diamonds on that. This with the intensity of his uh, realization, God to him was so clear. Every form of Hindu gods and goddesses, the prophets of different religions, so with authority he could say, all religions are several paths, all religions are true, all are valid. So quarrels about religion must be a thing of the past. This is the great uh, harbinger of the harmony of religions. He was, when we come to the scene of this, Kalpataru day. So Sri Ramakrishna had, in the meanwhile, attracted so many great people, people from the universities, rationalists, people who were emotional nature, so, so many different panthas, different sects of Hinduism, they were all his followers. The sincere followers of his teachings, both young and old, formed into a, brand, a band of spiritual seekers who used to throng to Sri Ramakrishna at Kasipur house. So you all know that Sri Ramakrishna got 
cancer in his throat in the last date he was being treated to treat him that brought him away from dakshineshwar he was living in a bungalow in kasipur it was called the kasipur udyanwati garden house the garden house at kasipur he was living there these devotees used to come but they all knew that he was suffering very seriously and sri ram krishna had that tremendous heart even at that stage if anybody would touch him he would absorb all their sins into himself to make them pure and make them enjoy the highest spiritual joy so they knew that all their sins would be absorbed by him for which you know he had to suffer again so they said we shall not go on touch sri ram krishna we shall not give him any trouble we come to this place let him be in in his room we will sit here and discuss about him and then we will disperse that was the thing they used to do from several months they would come and then go away on the 1st of january so they have all come there and then they were all discussing see about him sitting under a mango tree that was there a little away from his, from the bungalow where he stayed 1st january 1886 that was a friday and sri ram krishna had told a a few weeks earlier when he was in shampukur that before i leave this world i am going to make everything plain about me to the world what is it to be made plain when god comes he comes as if a king coming in incognito the formerly the kings wanted to know directly what the people are enjoying or suffering so they would themselves go personally they would not depend depend upon ra r a w they would not depend upon a pad they would not depend on scotland yard all the fellows will disturb and they will not give you the right news so king himself would go what the sense of justice they had when they would go if they reveal them that they are kings they will not get the truth nobody will tell him the truth so they would dress it themselves in such a way even the person who comes nearest to you you would not be able to know him king in incognito so sri ram krishna used to compare himself to that you see it is as if king has come in incognito now so i have come dressed myself as an ordinary person nobody will be able to know now but how people must know otherwise how will they worship you how will they all get to moksha in a easy way they must know also at the same time they should all know but they should not know how would it happen keep them in ignorance until you leave and the last day you announce announce and go away <laughs> that is the best way he thought i will before i go i will make everything public and then go he had announced so people were wondering when he will make it public that was the day he chose on that day i will make everything public how did he make it public so he said so the that that day sri ram krishna had come and he gave another one example also you see on that day i am going to distribute the highest spiritual knowledge without any price any mat anything that is sold at a lower price 30% discount itself there will be a tremendous crowd there so suppose somebody says it will be freely given you cannot control the crowd at all that would have happened if it earlier announced it much earlier very few days earlier he announced on that day i am going to throw away all the spiritual knowledge without any price and the example he gave the simile he gave was the vegetable sellers they bring the vegetable carrying themselves upon them themselves or some bullock cart in a large quantity they will come and sell in the bazaar so in the morning they sell at full price by noon they say only half or less is sold the other way we will have to carry it back unnecessarily so let us sell it at half price so in the afternoon when it is past when nearing the evening they will sell it at one fourth price so when the bazaar is has to close down there is no way of selling so they don't want to carry it back it is useless it will get spoiled throw it away without any price sri ram krishna said that will be the throwing away i am going to do on that day how did he do full price when did he gave you see in his life when first people went to him he made people practice lot of sadhanas and then later on when people came he gave them gave them out of his mercy some visions right now when he then when he touched immediately they got a vision all right you go on with this vision 
and to some people he said you come only three times that is enough or you what you, what you will want will be achieved and this last day no touching no one third praise or one fourth praise without praise i am going to give so on that day now we are ready to throw away the same at no price people with or without any spiritual practices also would be realizing god through his unconditional grace ahaituka kripa so this is possible only to god this is the way he made himself known when when a person can give moksha to others only god can give it nobody can give because it is the god who has put us in bondage he that has put you into bondage must release you the the high court order so you have been imprisoned there order is to imprison you you have put into the jail there must be another order to release you without that order the same high court must give otherwise you cannot get out you will be there in the jail only here we have been put into the jail of samsara by god if somebody says i will release you from this samsara no for certain it is god alone not without god's order nothing can happen in the form of moksha or freedom devi shesha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya this maya cannot be crossed because maya is my power unless i tell she will not allow you to cross her and go if anybody is freed from this maya it is god alone that was what in bhagavatam also we see krishna says people were worshiping indra etc he went and told don't worship indra what is what can indra do for you he is only a jeeva like you sitting in heaven somebody is sitting in secretariat somebody we are sitting here there is no difference between the people who are sitting in secretariat are here like that indra is all there in there you go on worshiping him you will never get freedom from the samsara then whom are we to worship worship me he said then indra got very angry you know the story he sent all the rains and clouds and thunder and everything but krishna managed he lifted up the whole hill like go go the night self it is lucky for indra he did not throw it at him he would have thrown that the hill like at him like ramachandra throwing that bana again that uh, asura it pursued him in all the three worlds so indra would have been in a great difficulty so only god as krishna said sri ram krishna says i will release everybody by by just by wish so that day has come so he sri ram krishna demonstrates that he is that god himself by liberating ordinary bound souls no even sinners by a wish by a blessing we all know in 1886 as we all know sri ram krishna was ailing with cancer and he was confined to bed and on that day so many so many people had from calcutta had come at 3 pm today at 3 pm earlier to that one our temple will be open to remember that sri ram krishna we will have to end welcome him at 3 o'clock when he comes he was sitting he was lying down on the first floor of that bungalow he started coming down it was a holiday for calcuttans being a new year day as you have already heard the british regime was there so new year day was celebrated in a very big way as a, though, though it was a christian new year day all the hindus and all other uh, religious people also celebrated that day so many had come to kasipur to meet sri ram krishna by way of celebrating that holiday when holiday is there what will you do sitting at home let us go and these people had a religious inclination they all came to spend their time at kasipur but they were hesitating to trouble sri ram krishna they were all sitting under the tree as i all as i already mentioned sri ram krishna in his room on the first floor he felt at that time at the around about 3 o'clock he suddenly got up from his sick bed and told his nephew ramlal hey ramlal i would like to stroll in the garden i would i would like to go down and then move about in the open space there where the devotees are present so ramlal helped him in putting on his dress you see he has to put on his dress he was lying down you see he got up so he put on a white uh, red bordered buddhoti and uh, and it, it it a flannel shirt and a green flannel cap with flaps covering his covering his ears 
and then he put on his red slippers his slippers were red he had put on his socks also everything that we use now he has used all sanctified when you put on the socks we can remember sri ram krishna has also put on a socks i have also put on but those socks were sanctified our socks started start smelling so bad after but we to throw them away so he put on socks also and put on his red slippers and he took a baton in his hand this is unusual no, no photograph of me you see a baton and no description of him is there where he held a baton and went on that day he goes with a baton baton means it shows the power it when the power wielding man only used to have a baton in the time of uh, the old old and old rulers anybody is having a baton in his hand means he is wielding the power of uh, the king so the, he is wielding the power as the lord of karma all the jivas are there suffering under their karma what is the state in each state person is suffering he is not able to get moksha he is not able to get devotion he is not able to progress what for because of his karma obstacle so that karma must be driven out that can be done by the karma adhyaksha the lord the lord of all karmas so that baton in his hand i am going to drive away all the karma from everybody and give the moksha with a smile on his lips this is the description of shardanand ji with a smile enchanting smile on his lips and a divine light shooting out as it were from his body he wanted to come down and those of you who have gone to kashipur garden house even today the same model is there that steps are perhaps one and a half foot high each one all our steps are 4 inches 5 inches it almost i think one foot or one foot at two inches it should be they should be there so high your knee must be very strong at the he wants to he took the help of ramla to slowly come down the steep wooden steps helped by ramla so he comes down and gets into the first room second room then the room, the gate outside so first room he comes there he finds narendra rakal and other direct disciples they have been meditating all through the night and just then it was 3 o'clock in the noon so they were taking some rest so he did not awaken them he was happy that the whole night they have meditated let them take a little rest then with a smile on his lips he proceeded further to the next room in the next room the household disciples were there they had also spent the night there perhaps not the whole night a little of meditation they might have done so but they were all talking about shri ram krishna and his divineness so shri ram krishna heard it heard about it he was happy that they are talking about me because the more they talk about shri ram krishna it is beneficial for them so he said they are in the right path they are doing the right thing so again he smiled and then proceeded further and came out of the door and came out of the gate he was proceeded towards the main gate of the ashram so one of the direct disciples latu he wanted to go with him but when he came and saw some devotees in the meanwhile have got up and started going along with sri ram krishna towards the gate then latu disappeared from there because they were trying to clean up and set right his bed etc so they had work inside the house so went away and we should also think about holy mother where she was she was also there inside and my she must have peeped out of some window what is happening outside she must have seen also ram krishna proceeding towards the gate how do we conjecture there is one uh, um, jadu malik he is celebrate this uh, say, this occasion in his uh, bungalow in dakshineshwar he publishes a invitation card every year you see in that invitation card kasipur garden house is there on the top window mother is looking up shit <laughs> or oh, she is looking up so mother would never look at anything other than sri ram krishna so she is finding out where he is going what will happen to him perhaps she must be worried also or might be very happy also today he is going to do for which for what purpose he has come he is going to make everybody understand so mother was also inside direct disciples were all inside and almost all the people that were outside who were going to get the blessings of sri ram krishna were all householders involved in the difficulties trials and tribulations of this world so holy mother and other helpers were busy inside 
Sri Ramakrishna accompanied by a few devotees slowly walked towards the main gate and it was 3 pm as we already know about half way there was a mango tree now also there is a mango tree but this is we have planted it because we had to plant we did not plant anything there was one mango tree somewhere near about somewhere else near the uh, bungalow so all people would go and sit under the tree worship that tree throw coins at that so we said what is this sri ramakrishna never came to this mango tree at all it was there and it is no more there we said let us put another tree so we put another tree in the in that one in the same place where it was now everybody thinks that it is the same tree of course by jinner but, but it is a mango tree per- perfectly all right but not the exact one that was there so he in the half way mango tree people were all city devotees some famous devotees like girish chandra ghosh also were there among the sri ram them sri ram krishna noticed girish chandra ghosh ram chandra datta atul brother of girish chandra ghosh akshay kumar sen author of ram krishna puti yam vaikuntana sanyal upen mazumdar there was another one upen also upen mukherji he is a very peculiar case we will come to that one upen mukherji was a very poor boy poor young devotee who was coming to see ram krishna and others totaling about 30 to 32 people 30 to 32 people are waiting there to be blessed by him they were all discussing sri ram krishna's teachings as soon as they saw their master coming towards them they started getting up and going and they forgot the joy was so much that they didn't go up to trouble him but he himself is coming to them he thought he is in a very benevolent mood they forgot that they should not touch him one after another they went and started touching his feet and saluting him they forgot their earlier resolve not to touch him when girish chandra ghosh came to touch his feet sri ram krishna asked him girish what have you seen in me that you are proclaiming that i am an incarnation of god and such things so girish chandra ghosh was an actor he was a writer but more than that he was a daring man he did not hesitate to speak his heart before anybody and sri ram krishna the incarnation of the age and his guru he did not hesitate he immediately said what can i reach like me praise you sir about whom vyasa and valmiki failed to describe what can i praise you and he knelt before sri ram krishna after seeing this figure of sri ram girish chandra ko full of devotion and faith sri ram krishna was moved to his very depths because this girish chandra ghosh had taken the name of vyasa and valmiki as soon as you say vyasa we remember mahabharata and krishna if you say valmiki we remember ramayana and rama so he has reminded sri ram krishna of rama and krishna as soon as rama and krishna means his own very basic nature rama and krishna has come in the form of sri ram krishna he has himself announced he was stirred to his very depth he went to the highest state of ecstasy then immediately he started blessing everyone girish has referred to this sir valmiki and valmiki sri ramayana and mahabharata which third of sri ram krishna's deepest roots so sri ram krishna went into high state of samadhi his face shone with the divine light so is and so did his whole body and on seeing this transformation the devotees all the more got excited they started saluting more and more sri ram krishna now coming down a little from samadhi lifted up his hand blessed them all saying what more shall i say may may the spiritual consciousness of you all be awakened toma der chaitanya hok let all you be awakened spiritually as soon as he blessed the blessings of parabrahman himself god himself the blessings are such a power as each got up after touching his feet sri ram krishna blessed him touching his chest and saying chaitanya ho chaitanya ho be you awakened be you awakened so as soon as he said this one this touch made each one realize as ashutoshananda was telling his own his spiritual ideal 
somebody was meditating on god as brahman god as kali god as krishna god as god as shiva god as sri ram krishna himself according to his own each one realized in his own way the high spiritual truths they were struggling to attain earlier one devotee called bhupati he went into samadhi itself bhav samadhi another vaikuntanath sanyal saw sri ram krishna everywhere inside outside himself and many others like ramlal saw their ist devata living and moving and so on that was the immediate effect of the blessing of sri ram krishna all began singing sri ram krishna's praises and offering flowers at his feet girish searched out one fellow was missing out of the 32 that was the cook he was busy cooking this girish and the god went and dragged him out of everybody is getting blessing go you all ask for blessing this ganguli this cook he had never prayed perhaps he must have been cooking and he was an ordinary cook so we cannot expect him to be a spiritual aspirant he also went because girish and the god had ordered him when he went he was also blessed he also got spiritual realization and this upendra mukherjee whom i referred with a poor boy he was very poor so he used to go to sri ram krishna and sri ram krishna knew his poverty so he had told him when you come here you purchase some two paisa of jalebi so he bring the jalebi and distribute it to everybody one piece one piece he had done that so this poor fellow on that day when everybody has got the spiritual wealth he did not feel like asking for spiritual wealth at all he said sir give me some physical wealth i want some physical wealth physical wealth you will have plenty of it sri ram krishna blessed and we see in his life he got so much of wealth he spent it lavishly on serving the poor devotees serving specially the devotees of sri ram krishna on every celebration of sri ram krishna's birthday he used to, thousands of people used to come everybody he would feed them as much jalebi as they, as they would like because sri ram krishna had asked him to bring one paisa of jalebi now i have money feed everybody all jalebi people used to eat in perhaps kilograms such was the philanthropy of that man after he passed away his wife went on giving donation to her. she also could not take this left a lot of property went behind and much of that property is being used for several relief work by the ram krishna mission that is sri ram krishna's blessing i refer to this always usually they don't refer to this incident i refer to this one to assure our own devotees it is not that sri ram krishna will give you only spiritual thing suppose you are in need of physical thing that also he will give but it would be like going to a king and asking for a brinjal so we should not go and ask for it suppose you want brinjal only you don't want ask for it doesn't matter take the brinjal from the king and show everybody this brinjal is not from market it is from king it has got a speciality so this poor man was also blessed you will get plenty those people that did not come at that time they came a little late they also got sri ram krishna blessing and all this leela this sport was over within within about half an hour in the meanwhile sri ram krishna went back to his room and he was resting there so why did sri ram krishna what did why did he bless all you you be you all awake and spiritually in fact at that time if you see the history of our country what we had at that time we wanted was the political freedom we were all being trampled under the feet of the british so we had no freedom to talk about our religion talk about our culture live in our own way and be proud of our language so nothing of us was any, had any respect so if anybody wanted at that time even the most intellectuals they wanted political freedom sri ram krishna gave us spiritual freedom not political freedom he was a statesman he was not a politician politician looks for 5 years for next election whereas statesman looks for the full life of him all the life i am living my country must progress so sri ram krishna was a statesman he said suppose the freedom is given to them without the spiritual base what will they do with that freedom so they have learned slavery under the british they will make other slaves these are all the thing they would do that's what they are doing now 
you see most of our politicians are doing the same so they were in fetters they put all the fellows big parties are under fetters one fellow says something the whole follow whole will follow like the sheep behind what what more fetters do you want thousands of people being led like a flocks of sheep that should not happen sri ram krishna said let each man become a powerful unit to do good to the world one man one vivekananda is enough to bring new light new life to the world like that we must have vivekananda in thousands sri ram krishna said let spirituality be awakened in everyone then wherever they are spirituality when it comes it gives you the tremendous power by which you know you you get awakened you know your roots you know that you have so many times you have undergone slavery you have thrown it out through your heroism through your sacrifices certainly when spirituality comes you are going to throw away this political slavery and it happened it is after sri ram krishna only people became spiritually empowered and that spiritual power a gandhi was a spiritual man vinoba bhave was a spiritual man bal gangadhar tilak was a spiritual man subhash chandra bose was a spiritual man and those were the people who brought us freedom not the all rip and rag that are the running out saying that we is fought for the freedom it is the spiritual people that fought us fought for our freedom and successfully sri ram krishna had awakened that spiritual consciousness in everyone and we know afterwards how this spirituality started working through swami vivekananda vivekananda went to the west and gave the message of sri ram krishna the whole west started revering literally the culture the, the the indian nation indian nation became an adorable nation in the eyes of the west and that paved the way for further political independence also today wherever you go we are referred to as a spiritual nation as a moral nation as a nation who we, who love peace pacific nation we are considered as a peace loving nation why because of the spiritual base so sri ramakrishna came on that day and gave us the basic thing that this nature that this nation wants on which you know it has been great in the past it will be it is getting to greatness even now that is the spirituality so swami vivekananda stressed on this point our whole culture is resting on our spirituality so let us awaken this one swami ji in his famous statement said awaken the spirituality all that is excellent in you will get awakened so you will be able to achieve everything with the power of spirituality so spirituality means a spiritual man will be an honest man spiritual man will be a person who look, looks on everybody as one soul and he is ready to sacrifice and serve and and do good to others it is such people if they are there how can you think that a nation will lag behind there will be tremendous unity there tremendous cooperative power will be there every type of progress will come economic progress will come social progress will come and spiritual progress will certainly come the root is that spirituality so sri ram krishna gave us the spirituality on that day and first january the world reloaned holiday it was so swami sri ram krishna's message was given on a world holiday that means it means for the all over the world it is not only for us not indians it is for the whole world so kalpataru day today the world may not know maybe after 50 years now in durban they are celebrating kalpataru all over america and europe they will be celebrating kalpataru day after another 50 years that will be greater than the new year's day celebration and then probably all you devotees will be invited come come kalpataru day has come so you come and spend 15 days with us all of you have to go to europe and america and australia to celebrate kalpataru day it is not at all image imagination such things are sure to happen that is the power if all the wealth and glory of this world are compared to sri ram krishna always used to say they are not they are not lasting they are very temporary they are like zeros all they get they get they get their meaning if you have one behind them if all the zeros are there if you put a one then it becomes one lakh 10 lakhs one crore if that one is there zeros also get their value all our wealth all our education all our other arts and sciences will get a meaning if they are used in a spiritual way 
and to use it in a spiritual way we want god we want love of god we want devotion to god so this is what sri ramakrishna taught us to make all our economic and social and uh, educational life meaningful we want the spirituality so he said let you be awakened spiritually so that spirituality awakening has started on that day and it is going on now and today we are with the first spiritual this day we celebrated here 16 years back perhaps there were 50 or 60 only today i am finding almost 600 people here there are another 600 outside sitting in the temple so by the time we go for prasad there will be 4000 people last year there were 4000 so people are coming to know more and more and day is not far off when people think that this spiritual awakening is the goal of our life so for this the greatest helper in this path is sri ram krishna they are going to throng everywhere where sri ram krishna name is uttered he is worshiped he is talked about his message is given so may we pray to sri ram krishna that his message spread to every one of us here everyone outside india also and bring permanent peace lasting joy lasting life and lasting enlightenment to everyone let sri ram krishna be gracious to one and all of you and today is the new year's day not only this year may all the years that come be full of joy full of happiness and full of fearlessness and freedom to every one of you let us pray to sri ram krishna like that om shanti shanti shanti